Teacher talking sports, what it does, what it do, how we living with the 2023 MLB season winding down. I've seen places like the Athletic, ESPN, Bleacher Report give their Rookie of the Year front runners. Uh, the Rookie of the Year has been handed out since 1947 and in both leagues since 1949. The first ever winner was Jackie Robinson. He is one of 19 Hall of Famers to win Rookie of the Year. Others include Rod Carew, Eddie Mary, Cowherpin Jr., Derek Jeter, Willie Mays, Frank Robinson, Tom Seaver, Johnny Bench, and Mike Piazza. Others in the future, Ichiro, Justin Verlander, Mike Trout, Shohei Otani, Albert Pujols, Bryce Harper, amongst others, are going to get in. Well, in this video, I'm going to take a look at who I believe to be the 10 least productive uh, rookie of the years in MLB history uh, regarding their playing career. Not every rookie of the year has gone on to have an outstanding career. So, of course, as a subjective list, this is my opinion. But let's get started. The 10 least productive careers for MLB Rookie of the Year winners. I'll go in descending order. So starting with 10th, let's go with Chris Coughlin, who was named NL Rookie of the Year at the Marlins in 2009, where he batted 321 with an 850 OPS. Um, for his career, hit just 53 homers, 234 RBIs, uh, 258 batting average. Never was nearly as productive as that 2009 season. Ninth, Bob Grimm, who in 1954 was named the AL Rookie of the Year, went 20 and 6 with a 3.26 ERA. Uh, did walk 85 batters though, um, and actually was named an All Star in 1957. But for his career. Just 61 wins, uh, 268 games pitched, 60 as a starter. Did save 38 games. Eighth, let's go with Don Schwal, 1961 AL Rookie of the Year. 15 and 7 with a 3.22 ERA. Although he walked more batters, 110, than he struck out 91. The following season, he also walked more batters than he struck out. For his career, 49 and 48 over 172 games, 103 starts. Seventh, Harry Bird. Bird was named the AL Rookie of the Year in 1952 by um, with the Philadelphia Athletics. Went 15 and 15 with a 3.31 ERA. Uh, that season he did walk 98 batters. The following season walked 115 while giving up the most earned runs in the AL. And also with the most losses with 20. For his career, went 46 and 54 in 108 starts, 187 appearances. Sixth, let's go with Bob Hamlin. Bob Hamlin was somewhat of a cult, had a cult following uh, to begin his career with the Royals. Um, wore glasses at the plate. Was a little bit heavy, but he was a slugger. Uh, his rookie season, 1994, connected on 24 homers while batting 282. He had one other somewhat productive season with the Tigers, batting 270 with 18 homers before his career. Just a 246 average, 67 home runs. Fifth, Jerome Walton. Walton was named the NL Rookie of the Year in 1989. Batted 293 that season. Was a guy who had very little pop in his bat. Just 25 career homers in 1,573 at-bats. Just a 376 career slugging percentage. Uh, 24 steals his rookie year. Just 34 the rest of his career. Fourth, we're going to go with Angel Barroa who in 2003 was named the AL Rookie of the Year while with the Royals, but at 287 with 17 homers. Over the course of his career, just hit 29 other homers. Uh, 258 batting average, just a 76 OPS+. Plus. Third, Pat Listash. 1992 was named the AL Rookie of the Year with the Milwaukee Brewers. Batted 290 that season with 54 homers. Very little pop in his bat. Just five career homers and 1,772 at-bats. 626 on base percentage. 309 slugging percentage. 68 OPS plus for his career. Second, Butch Metzger, who in two, excuse me, 1976 was the NL Rookie of the Year. 2.92 ERA, pitching 77 games out of the bullpen. Saving 16 games, had just seven saves the rest of his career. Only pitched five seasons in his career, 191 career games. 
and in my opinion, the least productive rookie of the year in MLB history, Joe Charbonneau. Um, his career was disappointing because back ailments really forced him out after winning 1980 AL Rookie of the Year, where he batted 289 with 23 homers. He went on to play just two more seasons, a total of 70 games, six homers, and um, just a 212 batting average over that time. So, um, you know, a big what if his back elements definitely forced him out early. So there you have it, my 10 least productive Rookie of the Year winners in MLB history. I did not include Ken Hubbs, who won the 1962 NL Rookie of the Year. He would play just one more season and then passed away in a car, uh, excuse me, in a uh, plane crash, so I was not going to include him. Others I considered Bobby Crosby, Scott Williamson, Pat Zachary, Albie Pearson, and Walt Dropo. Um, also, Kyle Lewis, the 2020 AL Rookie of the Year, currently in the minor leagues. He's got to uh, start getting it together again, or he could find his way on this list. But what do you think? Which of these guys do you remember? Is there anyone I didn't name that you could think of? Let me know in the comments. Anyhow, don't forget to subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to subscribe. Like the video, share the video, hit the bell for notifications. I'm out.